to better apply the base coats, I left the shield arm unassembled for now. While the model is already base coated black, the finish is different from the black paint I'll be using. So after a second base coat of black, I continued working on the armor with a 1 to 2 mix of dark grey and water. This was applied with a sponge, making sure to remove the excess paint, so as to not have it run into the recesses due to its dilution. This first base coat was applied all over the armor. Because of its dilution, two coats were applied to build up the color. For the next coat, I stuck a piece of sponge to the back of a pencil and trimmed it down to create a more precise tool, which I'll be using to stipple basalt grey in a similar dilution as before. Once again, I make sure to remove any excess paint from the sponge. I'll focus on the upper facing areas as well as any pronounced volumes. If you are still unsure of where to highlight, you can check out the video link above where I focus on the topic. Working with diluted paint will help me avoid harsh transitions, though any present will be easily blended later. Just like before, two coats are applied to build up the color. I'll finish up the stippling of the armor with medium sea grey. An old brush will be used this time so as to have as much control as possible. To avoid leaving coffee stain marks, the excess paint is removed. The application is kept within the previous highlight, leaving it visible to create a transition. By now you might think the armor is looking more grey than black, and you might find some transitions are too visible. To fix all this, a glaze of black will be applied. The key here is to avoid paint pulling, so I'll make sure to remove any excess paint from my brush. This is then applied as a thin layer which will tune down the grey as well as blend everything together. I work one panel at a time and make sure it dries up before applying another coat. The more you apply, the more the layers will blend, but so would the highlights begin to disappear. See how I'm aiming my brush stroke towards the darkest parts of the armor so as to have more paint deposit there. I'm also always moving the paint around to avoid any blobs of paint to form along the transition. A good way to see if you've reached your desired tone is to base coat the other elements and compare. To finish up, I'll enhance the deeper shadows and recesses with a pin wash. I used inks for this due to their higher pigmentation, but two coats of black acrylic will work the same. The application is extremely easy. I first go over the recess with plain water. Then, once my other brush with black touches the water, the paint will find its path on its own. Above, I'll link the video I made exclusively dedicated to this technique. After applying lights and shadows to the other details, I decided to enhance the contrast on the armor through a simple edge highlight of basalt grey. There is no need to go over all the model, just the head, chest and hands will suffice as well as any bent knee which protrudes, but that will depend on the pose of your model. With that finished, here is the end result. I made this video to showcase that good results can be achieved without the use of an airbrush or contrast slash speed paints. As always, if you'd like to see me cover any topic in a beginner-friendly way, you can let me know in the comments.